As we move into our study of the Great Depression, it's important to understand the idea of the stock market, as this would play a role in the beginning of the Great Depression. And so to understand the stock market, we really need to look at several terms related to economics and uh, the overall idea that you can actually own part of a business and a company. And that was an exciting opportunity to many people in the 1920s. So, what is the stock market? You don't have to take notes here, but we're going to move on to these different ideas. Um, so, I'm going to let you go ahead and look at the resources if you want in our study guide page in our uh, Great Depression New Deal study page if you'd like to see and you can even print out the notes if you'd like but for this you don't need to uh, a company is the idea of if you form a business usually that business will start out quite small if it grows and becomes more and more uh, successful you might grow as a business and maybe build a a bigger building and get more workers and hire more people and as you expand you could eventually become a corporation and so we're going to look at this idea of Sutton soccer ball factory as our example and so uh, a company organizes its business and then eventually could become a corporation if it's successful enough and so some corporations, you know a lot of them, Oreo, Subway, Nintendo, Best Buy, Taco Bell, all of these are businesses that have grown into corporations. And so um, as we talk about uh, the stock market, you can actually own part of these companies. So how do corporations work? We're going to use our example, Sutton Soccer Ball Corporation. And there's four things we need to understand, four ideas, invest, share, investor, and stock. So let's take a look at these. When you invest, that means that you are buying shares in a company. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's go to shares. A share is a tiny portion of a company. You can buy one share and just you're just barely owning a part of that company. Or you can buy many shares and own more and more of that company. And you could, um, you know, if you, on the beginning of a business, you could buy quite a bit of shares and own a large chunk of that company. And so that's what the idea is when you invest. You are saying, I like this company. I like the idea behind it. I know it's going to be successful. I really believe in it. I want to own part of this company. And so most of the times, especially with these big corporations, you're only going to own the tiniest of a percentage of this. But it's still, if it's public owned, at least part of it, um, you can be part of that company and whether it grows or uh, has problems and so when you invest you're buying part of the company a share of the company so an investor is that person who is going to own a share and so that person trades their money they give their money for a stock okay a stock and so once again we look at this a stock is the ownership of a company OK, and so when you talk about owning part of the company, you keep that stock and eventually you could share that stock. Um, you could, um, you know, pass it down to your family and keep it for a long period of time or you can sell it and maybe make a profit or you could potentially lose. Um, but if you have a share in a company. You own that stock, and that means you own part of the company. And so here's the idea. When the company is making money, it's growing, it's prospering, they hire more uh, workers, and it grows into a successful business, the value of that stock goes up. So you could have bought a share of this company for $100, and over time it could grow and be worth $1,000. So you can see how this is an investment that a lot of people would want to do if it's in the right company. Unfortunately, it's the opposite. If the company has problems, maybe they uh, are not successful. They have to 
downsize or fire some of their workers and they're just not making a profit, your money, the share that you own, maybe it was $100 that you bought uh, for a share, it might be worth $10 or maybe no dollars. It might be worth nothing if the company goes out of business. And so why would you buy shares? Well, you could see it is a risk, but that money that the investor gives by buying shares, that company is saying, yeah, you can have part of our company, a tiny little piece of our company, if you give us money. And we're going to take that money and do everything we can to grow our business, our corporation. And so really the money that an investor gives helps that corporation improve and grow. And so you take a risk when you spend your money to get a share of a company. And it could be something that uh, grows into a fortune. If you were to buy a stock of, say, uh, Apple in the 1980s, the company, um, over time, it has grown and grown in that stock, that profit that Apple makes, you make because you own part of that company and you could be wealthy if you especially if you own enough stock of a company, if you buy it, you know, cheaply and it just expands. And so that is the benefit. You could become rich. You could become uh, very much. Um, you go where the direction of the company. And so if it's going up, that's a ride you take with it or. Okay, there's still a risk and lots of people lose money on the stock market, just like lots of people uh, gain money. And so where is the stock market? That is in New York, New York City on Wall Street, which I know many of you have heard of. Wall Street is where the New York Stock Exchange is. And so people actually um, work on the New York Stock Exchange. They're called stockbrokers. It's someone who buys and trades and sells stocks for investors. And so if you're an investor, you say, I want to buy these stocks. There are actual people that are buying them for you and uh, trading them if you want to sell your stock. And so that person sells and trades stocks for the investors. OK, this idea of the stock market is important because in the 1930s, what happens with the stock market plays a huge role in what happens in the whole in the 1930s. It moves us into a time where economically there were some big problems and much of it started. It was not the only cause, but much of it was caused by what how people handled the stock market and borrowed money just so that they could try to make a profit. And all of a sudden, the banks closed down. There were huge issues with the way that the system was uh, set up. So we're going to study that this week. But I wanted you to understand the idea of the stock market. If you want to do this as review, you can pause this page and see if you know the answers to this. And we will see tomorrow what actually happened with the stock market the end of the 1920s and 1929.